Hello guys and welcome to the world of WWE. Sorry, I think my camera's a bit. There we go. So welcome to the world of WWE. Today we're doing my, my we're, today we're doing another edition of my thoughts. This is for NXT. So I'm uh, getting a bit slow on the pace because I got haven't even watched NXT UK yet. I need to do my my uh, which I need to do a view on. Then I have to um at the time of the recording I haven't seen NXT UK. It's been out for like. A, it was out yesterday, so I still need to see that. And, uh, and I need to do a My Thoughts on SmackDown and a review on 205 Live. So hopefully I'm going to get that all done. I think what I'm going to do is today, which you should be getting this video on Friday the 8th. Tomorrow, you're going to get your NXT review. So, on, so, so sorry, tomorrow you're going to get the NXT UK review. And on Sunday, you'll get the uh, SmackDown review. On a Monday, you'll get the 205 Live review, which is, by the way, the first ever 205 Live in in Full Sail University, which I think will be good, cause the, which is a really good decision, because the crowd is really going to be into it. So, yeah, let's go get on to this Y4 of NXT. Once again, another great show. I really don't get a problem. Of course, this week, the ratings will have gone high, but they have definitely gone high, but... I really don't get why before this week only 700,000 people were watching the greatest wrestling ever. Like from what I've seen, it's better than AEW from the highlights. I know I'm going to say it, I prefer NXT, it's just my company and I'm more a WWE guy. And NXT is the best form of WWE. It has great matches, great storylines, it has somehow been able to control the storyline between... Uh, War vs. SmackDown vs. NXT and hit their own rivalry, which is War Games the day before. They've done it in a really good way. So, yeah. Next up, we I'm going to start off with something small. Tenaya Condi beat somebody. I'm not sure. It wasn't the best match. He kind of, she kind of does need to improve, but let's get out of the way because that, that wasn't that good, to be honest. So, yeah, we're going to kick off with the OC invading NXT, going into it. I think they beat the Undisputed Era before her early ring, saying how I, I, it was still a good promo, but I was going to say, like, how is this good? How is this good? I skipped this because I didn't need this. It would have made the most sense for, like, it made the most sense for them to invade NXT because the... The superstars like Ricochet, like a lot of those superstars went to NXT, here the OC didn't. So it made a lot of sense that they were the ones that defend, not like Kevin Owens or Ricochet, who literally left, didn't leave that long ago. All the Viking Raiders. So, yeah, it didn't really make much sense, but it, those type of people make sense. Then, Tommaso Ciampa came out and said, how, they always ask me when I'm going to be on the main roster. Then Tommaso Ciampa says, in a very cool line, this is the main roster. And I went crazy for that. And then uh, Keith Lee, then he w wanted to fight. Keith Lee and Matt Widow came out and he said, you're on, uh, uh, so in the main event, we're going to get that match. Next match I'm going to talk about is Shayna Baszler versus Dakota Kai in a, a really good match from the highlight show. Very good match, enjoyable, just very enjoyable. With a of uh, course, Shayna Baszler got the victory, but Dakota Kai looked like a star. Then we had a brawl between the wrestlers that are going to face at War Games. Then Mia Yang came in and hit him with the kendo sticks and stuff. And then we find out Mia Yim's taking the final spot on the War Games match, which I'm not really a big fan of. I mean, if this is going to be a storyline where she's trying to build with them showing, build that underdog storyline for Dakota Kai to maybe come up with Shemin, then fine, I'm per I'm perfectly fine with it. But Mia Yim, um, Mia Yim is a bad, I don't hate her, they, they sometimes I really like her, like, I really liked her mattress with Bianca Belair, but ever since, um, TakeOver Toronto recently, when he had that Awful match with Shayna Baszler, I'll be honest, that was a bad match, but at least we had the Candice Bay versus the Shirai match, but yeah, so, so, yeah, so I'm not the biggest fan of her, but I don't think she's bad. And there is a small problem that I'm liking, I'm not a big fan of, that before the women's division was incredible, and the women's division is still great, but they kind of lost, uh, they, everyone was on their different storylines and stuff. 
But now they're just kind of going out and screwing the battle for the tiles just to face in war games. No, and don't get me wrong, I love the fact they're in war games, but I would want a stipulation like the su if Shayna Baszler gets pinned, the superstar that pins her becomes the. Really? Sorry about that. So yeah, the superstar that pins Shayna Baszler becomes the NXT Women's Champion. Just show that these superstars want the title, which they do. That like. After War Games, it will probably go right back to that and be really good again. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, oh, we also had a uh, Pink Dunn versus um, who's uh, Damian Priest. Yeah, the Premier of Arkham, he does such a cool hour thing. Uh, it was a really good match. Really liked it. It ended with the referee getting bummed down or something. He, be done here in the logo which I like because he's not a good he is a baby face, he's a face, but not a baby face. He's like a not he's not like a goody two shoes like Finn Balor was on the main roster. He's not like goody two shoes. No. If he wants to do a low blow, he can, he does whatever he wants. So he'll let him a low blow, then get the submission when he breaks tries to break his opponent. Ah uh, Damien Priest taps up, then the match continues. So no then the match continues. No, that is the end of the match. Really good match. And afterwards, Killian Day came out and attacked him. Probably the only good thing he's really done on NXT. I'm sorry, but he's kind of more of a. It would be really good if, if all that sanity came back to NXT. It would be great. But yeah, this is still like it was still a bit, you know. So Killian Day, his debut beating up like Matt Riddle was pretty cool. But um, he's like, uh, sorry, he's. Um, I've literally, I'm jumping on my words, I've had a long week at school. <laughs> so yeah, so I, this was actually a really good segment, he came off as a threat, so I really liked it. And it is a, next up we had Angel Garza versus Tony, well I'm not sure if it's next up, but we had Angel Garza versus Tony Nies in an, in a really good match. What do you expect? Two great wrestlers, put them in the ring, of course you're going to get a good match, like there's no way... That you're not gonna get a good match out of it. So it was really good. It ended when he went to do a power off the second rope. He accidentally pulled uh like under his wigger tie wears these like tights. Yeah, so they pulled them off and delivered a power one to them and he didn't even realize. Then uh he hit his Angel Garza hit his finisher, the I think it's called the wing clip or something like that. Cover or maybe Angel Clip, I'm not sure. One, two, three. He is number one contender for the end. The Cruiserweight Championship. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure when that's happening. That might happen on Tour Five Live. That might happen at Takeover, which is what I uh, prefer because the NXT tiles kind of part of pay, uh, Takeover now. So I hope at least. So that's kind of yeah, cool. I can't think of anything else to talk about. So um, let's get to our main event. Um, Tommaso Chapman, Matt Riddle, and Keith Lee versus the OC, AJ Styles, and Carson in a great match. Very entertaining, really cool. The ending, although it was a, there was a small problem with it not being a new, a, a, like a no contest or, or no finish, but I didn't care. The match was really good. The ending was great, considering that. Then the ballot comes out. He hits his like sixteen nineteen, but it's like a different version, which is like a kind of like his head's then put hangs him on the floor. Then then AJ Styles does that, and and he does the little gun things. And it does build a storyline of whether Finn Balor is going to, like, whose side is he on? Because he recently left the main roster for NXT, but he can't be against NXT because he decided to go to NXT. And he used to be on the main roster, so he doesn't hate the main roster, but he's on NXT, he decided to do it. So it's, he's in a very interesting spot. Uh, that was really cool. I don't think he definitely isn't going to leave NXT if he will stay on NXT. So, yeah, and after, the, after that, uh, he, uh, he just starts trying to hit a uh, Styles Clash or Tommaso Ciampa in the wing. But then Adam Cole came out, I think this was the other round, hit and hit AJ Styles with a super kick, not, uh, which of course knocked him out. Then he hit a last shot on Tommaso Ciampa standing to Great episode of NXT. Highly recommend it. It was just incredible. Loved every bit of it. And by the way, we're also getting a t I, we're also getting two war games matches. The war game matches we're having uh, that we, that you know women's war games match and the undisputed era versus Tommaso Trampa, K 
Keith Lee and Matt Riddle and a to be determined opponent. I don't know who it's gonna be. Maybe it was someone for the main roster coming down to NXT. If Sami Zayn was a baby face, I would have gone for him, but you know, he's not, so yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Great episode of NXT. I will give it eight and a half out of ten. Great show. Really enjoy myself. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, turn on notifications so you never miss a video, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys!